Greetings and blessings to you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ. It is once again a blessing to be able to be here to go into Bible study with you. And I'm glad that you decided to be my guest. You could be listening to anyone, and I'm always grateful for those who stop by to listen to little old me. This video was pre-recorded, of course, uh, but we have in-person Bible studies that I want to continue to invite you to come and join us with. Uh, our in-person Bible studies are on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. and at 6 p.m. If you're in the area, Union Springs Missionary Baptist Church, Talladega, Alabama, we'd like to see you in the place. I'm not looking for new members. I'm not looking for you to, uh, to fulfill any type of obligation to us here. I just want to share the word with those who want to learn the word. So if you're in the area and you don't have a local church that's having Bible study, why don't you come down and see us? So let's get right into the word. We are still in John chapter number six after Jesus has fed the multitude of 5,000 plus with two fish and five loaves of bread. They have popped back up in the narrative, come back over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee looking for Jesus, but looking for him for the wrong reasons. They want bread and they're using the scripture to justify why Jesus should give them bread. So today I want to look at verses 34 through 48. And uh, while it's um, quite a bit of scriptures, not going to take as long with it, but I want to drive home hard the main idea, the main points that are in this text. So let's read together. John 6, 34 says, Then uh, said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye have also seen me and believe not. We're probably going to chop these verses up and not just read it all together. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Remember this verse number 36. You have seen me, but you don't believe me. You have seen me, but you don't believe me. That word seen there means to stare at, to look at with the eyes. I want us to, I wanted to stop right there because he's going to use a different word for seen here uh, pretty soon. All right, let's get back to our text. Verse 39, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, this is why I went back to the other word for see, everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. These are verses 34 through 40. Let's chew on this for a minute before we move. It's interesting to me that the Jews are here trying to justify why Jesus should continue to take care of their material needs. They said that their fathers were given bread by Moses in the wilderness. We said on last week that's a bad example to use because those forefathers are the very ones that have a strong implication against them or a strong indictment against them throughout the rest of the Bible. Why? Because they didn't believe. I mean, <laughs> the apostles talk about it. They, 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 the, the writer of Hebrews talks about it. That that generation could not enter into the rest that God had ordained for them because of unbelief. But their eyes are fixed on just wanting material things. I told you last week, that wanting an earthly king in Jesus 
or wanting a God who's only good to give us material goods, that's detrimental. That's a dangerous and spiritually deadly thing. You, you won't come to worship God himself. You will worship the things that he's able to give you. All right? Or really, you'll worship yourself thinking that you're deserving of those things from God. So, they said, give us this bread forever. This is after Jesus says that the bread of God is not a wood, it's a he that cometh down from God. They still don't have an understanding. You'll find this out towards the end of this text. But they said, give this bread to us forever. Jesus comes back at them hard. He comes back at them direct and he says, I am that bread of life. I am that bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. This isn't the first time that Jesus says this. He says that, that he gives the woman at the, uh, the Samaritan woman at the well, he gives her living water. This isn't the first time, but John, interestingly, is the one who uses uh, the bulk of the I am statements that Jesus makes. Now, this is important because when Jesus says, I am, Jesus says that I am the embodiment of this particular uh, concept. I am the resurrection and the life. He embodies resurrection and life within himself. I am the door. He embodies the way into heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He embodies those things. Here, Jesus is saying, no, the bread of life is not a bread that you specifically put on a shelf or put it in oven to eat. He says, I embody the idea of bread of life. This is going to be important because he's going to use some terminology at the end of this text that sends people packing. It offends them greatly, okay? Because their understanding is that bread is for me to consume. Bread is for me to eat and get full off of. And here Jesus is saying, I am that bread of life. Well, what's the purpose of bread? To satisfy you, your hunger. It is to make sure that you're satiated, you're satisfied, you're full. You understand? But Jesus is saying, I'm the bread that fills you to the point where you'll never be hungry again. Only in Jesus Christ, we are satisfied. We're, we're not looking for anybody else to give us salvation. We're not looking to anybody else to give us life. Jesus embodies satiation or satisfaction in life. He satisfies us by making us whole. He satisfies us by taking our sin away. He satisfies us by giving us what Adam threw away in the Garden of Eden. And he restores our relationship to God himself. Yeah, he says, I'm the bread of life. If you come to me, you'll never hunger, you'll never thirst. You'll, need, you'll never need anything. Food and water are what sustain us for natural life. If you go so long without food, if you go so long without water, you will die. Jesus, see, with food and water, you got to keep eating and you got to keep drinking. But with Jesus, you get him one time, that's all you'll ever need. Hallelujah. But he says in 36, you've seen me, but you don't believe me. He's telling them, again, you're, you've stared at me. You've looked at me. You've had a prolonged amount of time to see me in action, but you still don't believe. Now, this word believe, I want us to understand. The word belief is the same word for faith in the Greek, uh, pistio or pistis. And it is to have faith or with respect to a person or a thing. To give credit to, by implication to entrust, especially one's spiritual well-being to Christ. I trust my spiritual well-being to Jesus Christ. Not just for you to give me naturally what I want or what I need, but I entrust my whole soul to Jesus Christ. That's what it means to have faith in Jesus, to believe on Jesus, to believe, to commit, to trust, to put trust with. He says, you've seen me in action, but you don't trust your life with me. But 
Everybody that the Father has given shall come to me, and the one that comes to me I won't cast out. That's good news. That ought to make you happy right now because it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how bad you felt about what you did and how much you counted yourself out and said, God won't forgive me. He won't have me. He will not take me. He says, all that cometh to me, you, you won't come to me unless the Father's given you to me. So all that cometh to me, praise God, he says, I will not cast you out. I didn't come to do my will. Now, his will and the Father's will are one. But what he's saying when he's speaking, he says, I didn't come to do what men would usually do. I came to do the will of God. And the will of God does what men will not do. Whew, Lord, have mercy. Praise God. God won't cast you out. Men will cast you out. So Jesus says, I didn't come to do the will of man. I came to do the will of God. And everybody that he's given me, it is committed to me never to lose them. This is why we teach the doctrine that you cannot lose salvation. Those who truly belong to Jesus, the Father has given you to him, and he will know what in, no, in no wise reject you, and he cannot lose you. Now, he says that he's going to raise us up at the last day. He's speaking some things straight up that some folk would stone him to death over. I mean, he's, he's being plain and clear right here. Amen? So, he says in 40, everyone which seeth the Son, this is what I wanted to get to, and then we're going to move on through this. Everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This word seeth is not the same word for see that he uses in verse number uh, 36. In 36, again, they have stared at him. They gazed upon him with their eyes. But in this verse, this word is the word where we get the word theory from. How do we come up with theories in modern day? We do series of tests. We look at logical and rational explanations of things. We study. We come to the uh, the conclusion of a matter because of everything that we've studied. Now, we've had uh, the staring, horeo. We have blepo to just naturally see with your eyes. And here is the theoreo. Let me give you the definition of this. To be a spectator of, but to discern. Uh, intensive to acknowledge to behold, to consider, to look on, to perceive. So, in other words, they may not see him with their natural eyes, but the things that they perceive, the intuitive knowledge, the things that they discern. Amen. We look at the clues. We look at the word of God. We hear the word of God. And these are the things that that, that we consider, we take into consideration. Everyone who takes these words of his in consideration and they come to the perception that now I see it in my mind's eye. I know, I know that I know that I know that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that he's the Messiah, that he's the Son of God, that he's Emmanuel. Jesus told Thomas, who, who bowed down after having denied him and said, my Lord and my God, Jesus says, Thomas, you believe because you see with your eyes. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. I haven't seen Jesus with my eyes. I haven't seen his miracles with my eyes. And I don't have to live in a generation of folks who are doing miracles left and right of biblical capacity or biblical magnitude. I believe, I know. It's not just a hope. It's not just an educated guess. I know Jesus is alive and well. This, I'm not just talking about my subjective experience, my subjective evidence, what I feel. I know Jesus is real. He's alive. I trust him with my spiritual well-being. I will not pick up another religion. I will not pick up another Messiah. I will not pick up another prophet. I'm hung up. I'm sold out on Jesus. Are you sold out with me today? My goodness. Praise God. 
<laughs> if you are, you have everlasting life. And Jesus says, I will raise you up at the last day. Yeah. Paul says that the dead in Christ will rise up first. And we which remain, God Almighty, we're going to be caught up. We're going to be changed. We're going to be caught up in the middle of the air. We're going to meet him in the middle of the air. And so forever we shall be with the Lord. Now, let's finish this text. 41 uh, through 48. Then the Jews, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know, we know, how is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Now, look, these Jews are confusing what they've seen with their eyes. This, this right here, when he says, we know, that word is ido. In the Greek, it means to perceive with the eyes. So faith, we walk by faith and not by what? You got it, sight. These Jews are they're judging Jesus based off of what they see. They know who his family is. They know he's the son of Joseph and Mary. And, and they don't believe that he's come down from heaven because they're only basing their, their, their conclusion off of the physical evidence that they see with their natural eyes. This is why faith goes beyond natural sight. You've got to be able to, you've got to be willing to see this internally. You got to be willing to see this with your heart. You got to be willing to see this through eyes of faith. Now, 43, Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the father, which um, hath sent me. No man can come to me except the father, which hath sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. You will not come to Jesus unless God has already predestined you, unless God has already sent you. God has drawn you through Jesus Christ. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and have learned of the Father cometh to me. Where is it written in the prophets? I'll just give you two examples as I hurry. Isaiah 54, 13. Same chapter where he says no weapon form. He says, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. Jeremiah 31, 33 and 34. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And I will be their God. They shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So it's written. It is written in the prophets. They shall all be taught of God. Who? Those of those of those of us who are his children. Those who have heard and learned, in other words, those who receive the word of God, who receive the gospel of Jesus Christ and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They are the ones that come to him. Not that any man hath seen the father, verse 46, save he which is of God. He hath seen the father. So we haven't laid eyes on God. Therefore, we cannot base our conclusion on Jesus off of what we see with our eyes. Because you can't see that God sent Jesus into the world. You got to believe that. You got to see that through eyes of faith. Every spirit that confesses Jesus has come in the flesh, that spirit is of God. But every spirit that confesses him not, that's an antichrist. My, 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 my. Let me calm down. Let's, let's, let's finish this out. Verse 47 and 48, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. He's going to use some words. We'll, Lord's willing, get to it next week about eating this bread. But to eat this bread is to believe, is to receive. We eat the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, by that, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Believer, beloved, let me encourage you today that... 
You are not saved by coincidence. You're not saved just because you grew up in the church. You're not saved just because you got godly parents, because there are some who are saved who grew up in atheist households, agnostic households. There are some who grew up with people who believed in a God, but they never went to church. Believer, you are saved because you're, pre you're preordained, you're predestined. God has chosen you. He's given you to Jesus. And when you are given to Jesus, because you confess, because you heard, because you believe, you confess, you're his, and he has not and will not ever cast you out. You belong to him. He's a keeper. He, he is keeping us, sealing us to the day of redemption by his Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe, not because of what we've seen, but because of what we heard and we have received and accepted it in our hearts. Jesus is the Son of God. Listen, thank you for joining me in this Bible study. We pray to see you again. Uh, the next time we pick up, it more than likely be the second week of November before we get into our holiday season. But I'm so delighted. Probably do a video on next week, but I'm so delighted to have you with us. God bless.